So welcome to uh, welcome to teachers, teachers, teachers. Um, we um, are going to look at uh, um, college admissions essays um, with an eye toward AI. How can AI support students to do that? Chris Sloan has uh, volunteered a, a, an essay from a few years ago. Jessica Early um, has been writing about this for a number of years. So there's a framework for us to be thinking about. Um, is that fair to say, Jessica? I think that's yeah. fair. Okay. And um, we want to meet all of you. Um, so nice to see you. you're all sitting around the peer review table. Um, I think we're all here now. Um, Jean Marie, do you want to introduce yourself? Let me start with uh, you. Yes, I'm um, I'm a te an ESL teacher um, at Greenwich High School in Connecticut, and um, I have been helping students write their college essays for a million years. Uh, I have not started doing my research on AI yet. This is really my first attempt at dipping my toes in. Uh, so uh, th this topic grabbed my attention because it seemed like a perfect match. Cool. Do you do you teach seniors now, or do you who, who do you teach now? Uh, I teach all different grade levels, uh, but yeah, I help the um, in the ESL three and four class. We help them write their college essays. Cool, cool. Charlene. Yes. Uh, so I, I, I teach, well, I'm a bit of a maverick. I'm in an out of school setting, but um, I teach both um, literature and history um, using inquiry methods. And um, so I work with secondary students who are, who are in the throes at various points in creating college essays for sure. Jessica. Yes, yeah, so I started off as a high school English teacher in Portland, Oregon, and I taught there for a number of years and then got interested in doing research in my classroom. And I went back to school and um, got my PhD and my interest for my classroom have stayed. <laughs> uh, I've, I'm really interested in teaching writing and how to teach. I'm interested in teaching writing um, in ways that support ethnically and linguistically diverse students. And opening up the curriculum to teach writing. And this is what, you know, the writing project already does. We do this all the time, but teaching all different kinds of um, genres. And um, I'm now a professor at Arizona State University. And I train teachers and I run the Central Arizona Writing Project. And I wrote a book a number of years ago about a study connected to this topic. Um, AI wasn't happening as much then, but it was uh, a study of college admission essays and sort of figuring out ways of teaching it successfully to students and demystifying it so that they could be successful. Um, and you you have a recent book about genre as well. Um, and, and one of the things, I keep inviting Jessica to be with us as much as she can, because what, one of the things I would love to do is take some of that genre work that you've done and find ways to integrate AI in it. Um, so just, uh, um, David. Sure. Um, I've been coming to these conversations as Paul's been hosting for a while now. Um, my first career was as a teacher. I taught high school and then college. I also did fourth grade and ninth grade for a while. Um, and I've worked in education technology and publishing, and I've done a series of demonstration projects with technology over the years, the writing project, which um, was the reason I got connected with Paul again. I'm especially interested in tonight's conversation because of the uh, agency and the maturity, relatively speaking, that high school kids have and the incentive they've got with admissions essays. The whole idea of having some incentive to produce a personal piece of writing and potentially using AI in that venture or adventure feels very compelling. So there are lots of reasons that I'm excited to hear what you all have to say. Cool, cool. Chris. Yeah, so um, I teach high school English and media at uh, Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I teach seniors uh, for a third of my 
prep load is teaching AP English language to seniors. And uh, one of the first things we kind of dive into is memoir, autobiographical writing, tied in with college essay writing because uh, my students seem pretty, uh, pretty keen, um, obsessed slash freaked out by um, college essays. And so um, we, this is our second week. Let's see, yesterday I gave them a little survey about where they are with um, their college essay. And the majority of them clearly want a little help with their college essay writing. So some of them have the school sponsored like a little boot camp you know, college admissions boot camp, and and I also asked, does anyone have a like a private, you know, prep, you know, prep essay person? And nobody does, so it's kind of split down the middle. Some of them did the school thing, most of them did not, and so they've got a lot of questions and needs. It seems like about the college essay writing or the college application essay, and um, most of them have to write at least one, but it looks like a, a lot of them have to do numerous different college um, application essays and then those things called supplemental essays. So here we are. Cool. Um, Jessica, could we turn to you for a second? I just want to say up, up above us, um, stay here because we're going to do most of our work here, but up above us is a link to chapter four of your book that's on now comment. Um, the real, real, uh, Real world driving. Real world driving, yes. And um, in that, there are, I, it, correct me, or see if you can, if this can make sense. There seem to be to be three different kinds of, or three different sections to the workshops you presented. Can you kind of break that down for us? Um, as an introduction to the frame for what we can look at. Hi, Chad. Welcome. When you're ready, you can introduce yourself. Hi, Chad Vignola, Logistics Design Collaborative. Sorry, I'm not on video, but I just had knee replacement surgery, and uh, I'm lying in my bed, <laughs> so you don't need my old pillowcases. Um, so well, thanks for joining us. Can you move down a little bit? Uh, not in your bed, Chad, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not physical therapists. <laughs> using your using your um, arrow key, can you move down a little bit? I wish we could drag somebody. I don't think there is a way. To... All right, you'll figure it out, Chad. Um, oh, Oops, no, he's gone. We'll figure it out. Go ahead, Jessica. Is it is that a sign sure? clear enough? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the college admission essay um, genre is as we've all no noted, super important and on students' mind. It's a real world essay they ha have to write to get into certain colleges. Um, and I'll just give a little background just, uh, and a lot of you already know this, but the college admission essay requirement has changed over the years, um, especially now that the SAT is not always being used anymore. Um, so that essay is carrying some more weight. Um, and there's the common app, which is used by over a huge majority of, of colleges and universities, um, usually the larger ones. And the common app, uh, students write their essays to these common questions, and then the universities pull the essays. Um, and so that has changed things as well from when I was applying for college, where you did every single thing individually. So it just depends on the college and what students are being asked to write. But one of the things that I did in this study is gather um, a large corpus of successful college admission essays and study them to understand the genre. Like what is going on here? Um, and what do students need to understand to be successful in writing the genre? The reason I got interested in this is because when I was a high school teacher, my high school counselor, I was teaching a tract system and I had eight or uh, like honors and regulars and um, that, that college counselor and college advice only went to the honor students and not the regular students and um, I was infuriated by this and ended up this is a whole nother conversation but working to untrack our department over time um, but I but this genre to me like many Jessica. 
if I could just update that a second, I'm yeah. worried. I'm worried that the students that you were concerned about are not going to get the support of AI, and the, the other ones are. But anyway, so I think we we yeah. could, yeah, we could see it again. And I think but, it's with yeah, anything yeah. like yeah. the new that uh, there's so many things that serve as uh, barriers or that we create as barriers for students in terms of access and equity. And this is a genre that carries a lot of weight for students. And it doesn't actually, we can teach it and it can be used for so many things. So I've used it um, for students who've written it and ended up getting scholarships, using it as scholarship essays. Um, so no matter what, writing the essay, whether their students are applying for college, colleges that need them, um, or not, it's a useful genre, an important one. And the things that I um, think are really important in thinking about the repeated patterns or genre elements to teach are number one, to think about the audience. And the scariest thing for students is that they don't know the audience. It is this unknown, scary, usually when I ask students, they described who they thought the audience was and it was a white, older man with glasses. <laughs> that they didn't know. And I was working with students who n looked nothing like that and didn't relate to that image. Um, so one of the things I did, I think is really important to do is sort of really make clear who reads these essays. Um, and it's interesting because that actually is a mystery. I called a ton of universities and there are admissions officers, but often there's different committees. Um, but I think for them to understand that they're real people that are wanting diversity and amazing writing and good stories. And, um, they're not as different from them as we they may think um, in some ways. And then the other is that um, students are often in, in um, school nowadays not writing a lot about their own personal experience. And the college admission essay is a narrative, but it's also an argument. And so students are telling the story of something that matters to them to answer a question that the College of the Common App has provided. Um, and, oh, we have a new person. Should we welcome? It, it's Chad again. Oh, hi, Chad. Um, that's you're cool, back. Chad. Um, yes, when you're ready, use your air. Oh, I don't know if you can use. Um, Jean Marie, can you pull down to the white stool there? Um, and Jessica, could I interrupt at this point? Totally, um, I'm going to, on. Okay. No, yeah, okay, no, so one of the, um, so Chad, you're just covering somebody or Jean Marie, if you could move out, we'll figure it out though. You're fine, you'll, you'll figure it out. So one of the experiments that Chris has did this summer is, is you know, with our thinking partners on Now Comment, we create these personas. So when I reread your article, your chapter recently, I noticed that um, what, what you just described is tr trying to make real that person. I'm wondering if we could create templates or personas that would describe those people in some way and that those people would actually respond to kids' essays, right? Chris, do you can you imagine that? Do you know what right. I'm saying? What? Yeah, I mean... I agree with Jessica. One of the things, obviously, we talk a lot about with writers is who's the audience. And and so, um, yeah, to try to have them imagine this person who's probably reading hundreds of these things. Um, so try to imagine that. Uh, and then also, um, you know, imagining, I would imagine, like Jessica found out, that there's a wide range of readers. So to maybe right that you know there could be 20 somethings i would imagine reading this too um not all just a bunch of old people um just the way colleges are now like the probably maybe even paraprofessionals or you know not full-on prof uh, professors reading it so to imagine a wide variety of readers and to construct personas based on some of those personality traits or i guess um seems like a valid thing to do I love the idea. Cool. So what we would what we would need is uh, have you done any of this? Like, how how do you describe to students who those people are? Are there sketches of them? Are there like we would need some detailed 
imagining of who those people are and what they do, right? What they do with the essays in particular. Is that possible? Or Yeah, I mean, some of it, at the time I did this study, I called up different universities and colleges and just asked, who reads these essays? And it was a wide, just what Chris said, it's a wide variety of people. So, I mean, I think if I were creating the sketches now, I might do a little bit more calling just to get some more examples. But I think committees, um, sometimes the committees have students on it. Really? Um, All right, so let's put a pin in that and we'll go back to that. Um, did you want to make a second and third point or? I don't think right now, but I, I, okay. well, yeah. Yeah, I think just that there's particular genre elements that are repeated throughout. I think one of the main ones um, is just that there's a turn that takes place in the essay that moves from the inside out. Um, and successful essays tell a personal story, but then they um, they move outward and talk about why their experience matters in terms of going to college and what they want to study and what they want to do next. So in terms of that, is, is the turning point essay very close to this or not? Is that right? Yeah, OK. Yes. Yeah. So, so okay. that's in my new book and actually evolved because of my work with the college admission essay um, and this interest in this need for students to learn how to write and acknowledge events in their life that have changed them. And um, when we're talking about the the turn, where you'll probably can can you say at some point a little bit more about what you mean by that? And then David, I think you have some background noise going on. Oh, really, David? Hi. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. make sure you unmute it's, when you're ready. But okay. It's very hot here, and there's a fan going. Thanks, Chris. I'm I'm That's gonna put myself on mute. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. All right. So. Here's here's the here's how I would um, the next place I'd like to go, um, and 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 so that's sort of a, a setup of what what the what we're dealing with here. Um, you're you're all sitting around a table that says peer review, right? And and what we did this last spring, and I want to kind of start here because Chris, um, you mentioned that uh, you wanted them to get say back on their essays. Is that right? And then mm -hmm. the idea. Yeah. One of the ideas here is for us to actually use AI to do that and see how that goes. All right. And and just um, a background, you know, a lot of them okay. are unsure of their topic. And so they're writing these things with this high pressure situation. And sometimes, surprisingly, to no one here, um, what they write is not really what's being said or, or not what's being read by people. So, yeah. So. So. Um, all right, let me, let me just, uh, show a little bit, but you can, you, if, if, while I'm doing this, please go in, uh, Jean Marie and Chad, I'm not sure you have accounts on youthvoices.live, um, in which, uh, Chad, you might, I'm not sure, Jean Marie, everyone else does, please log in at youthvoices.live, so you can kind of do these things with us, um, and I'll, sh and I'll point you out to what to do here at the this is going to be workshopish. We're going to actually do some stuff together, and then and then come back and talk. Okay, um, but is there a way that I can jump on it, or what yes. do I do now? Yes, Set up an that, account? Is, that is by um, yeah. Except we'd have to approve it and all that. So instead, go in as with the username ttt one, and Chad, you go in as ttt two if necessary. And then your password is TTT123 with an exclamation point. That should work for you. Um, and I'm going to start share, and, and if it doesn't, we'll talk. But um, I'm going to start sharing my screen and kind of, if you click on the big peer reviews in the center, you will go to something. And Chris, I know this goes further than Sayback. Um, I'm kind of making a question or an argument or a thought about why that would might be useful, but you can you we can think about that, right? Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. So once you've gone there, and I'm going to share my screen, 
you can just sort of follow along there and I'm going to present, I'm going to go to window, I'm going to find this. All right. So this document, right, exists. Um, we are not going to, it's here and I'll refer to it again at the end. Um, but I wanted to show you, I'm getting there. Hold on. So what I did was I, I did this experience with a blog post, not a, not a um, college uh, essay. Um, and the blog post is in the middle. You could read that. Um, and then what we, asked, what we asked AI to do was to give us say back, pointing, lurking, and dear readers, dear reader responses. And you can look, you can open each of these and see what the AI gave us. Just want to just another framework here. Um, this, you know, it's not an unfamiliar setup, but I used um, something from the Writing and Thinking Institute at Bard College, um, th their sample peer review sequence to kind of define each of these. And I think it's worth saying this. When, and we're going to ask you to do this in a second, when a student uses say back here, I'm going to open this one. Um, this, these are the purple ones at the bottom. This is the prompt, right, that AI is getting for the say back. And we, we're not, we could spend some time looking at that or revising it or whatever. But for now, let's just go with that. It's, it's what Chris said. It's giving back non-judgmental feedback to what, and maybe that's enough. And, and I'm cool with that. We can think about that. But just to point out, when they use a template, and we'll get we'll explain all this. When they use a template called pointing, um, instead what they get back are very specific phrases that stand out right to the person to to the AI in this case. And then there's lurking, and which gives them some questions to think about. And and then there is an opportunity for the writer to say, "Hey, here's where my concern is with this piece of writing." And then the AI actually takes that into consideration when it gives feedback. So again, when I did peer review in my classroom, these are sort of the four things I ask kids to do. It you know, went well sometimes, not well other times, you know, that kind of thing. Any questions about this framework, first of all? Or thoughts about it? Well, I guess I just add one thing too, and that mm -hmm. is um, one of the issues that my students have with their college essay is, yeah, we mm -hmm. talked about the audience, um, you know, mm -hmm. and um, I think Jessica definitely has done a lot of work with the audience. So there's this anonymous audience, but it's a super personal topic a lot of time. And so they're oftentimes reticent to share it with their peers. And so I just did a quick survey to them, you know, like what would be the most helpful in last place was like, I'd like to get feedback from my peers. So that's why I think this this does have some pretty interesting possibilities. I see a lot of shaking heads on it. Anybody want to make a comment about that? If you've run into that too, or? Yeah, I would just say that I agree with uh, Chris's assessment that, uh, you know, this is a very um, vulnerable part time in these young people's lives and to be pouring out their heart to, up here in their in their world may not be comfortable for a lot of them in the first month of school right yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 so there is some notion that ai is a little easier to take right than a peer's response so it's and and i as we talking as we're talking about ai i i think we always want to look for where are the moments in our teaching when AI could do something better than what we do it now, right? And, and it's maybe, maybe, we'll see how it works. Maybe that, okay? So that's what's on this document. Um, I want to, now I'm coming back to Kuma Space, and I'm actually going to stop sharing this. All right. So, so naturally, I turned the whole thing off. Right? <laughs> but here we are. Okay. Let me get my camera back. 
Okay. Okay. So here's the proposal. Um, what I did was I took Chris's, um, the, the example that Chris sent me, and I put it up seven different times. You see it around there. There's a blue one, a red one, right? So find one that you're closest to. Open that one. Hopefully you're logged into Youth Voices. You'll have to log in now. And then I'm going to give you instructions for giving say back to that essay. Okay, so that's the basic thing we'll, we'll do first. Um, and I will demonstrate, don't worry, but feel free to go ahead of me if you, if you want to. Um, boop, boop, boop. All right, uh, is there one that, so, so the thing is in Youth Voices, you can't, there can't be like multiple people on it <laughs> on one document. So that's why I just copied it and everyone can go to a different one. Right? That makes some sense? Hope so. So I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to green. Can everyone identify which one you're on? Oh, just so okay. we know. Yeah. All right. Um, here's what we need to do. And there are instructions for this. Uh, let's see. Wait, really fast, Paul. How do yeah, I? Yeah, no. I'm logged in, but where do I yeah. find where you are? Good. So, Jessica, you would, right next to you on Kuma Space, you would go to the purple one. So, I'm going to go to red. Oh, okay. A, I was in Youth Voices. I need to be in. Yeah, yeah. In Como okay. Space, if you click on that, it'll take you back to Youth Voices, but you'll be there. Charlene, you would go to the one nearest to you, the white one. This is worth this is worth doing because we actually get to do it. That's the idea here. Jean Marie, you would go to which Blue one? looks good. I'm, I'm not logged in, but honestly, I'm perfectly happy to listen and sort of tag along okay. on your slide screen here. Okay. Okay. Paul, do, I, do you want me to do the stump or I guess the stump, yeah? Yes, that's right. Yeah. You're, the, you're the stump. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, I feel done. But I see yeah. us and I see your screen, Paul, but I don't see our little people in chairs. Uh, so on a different tab, you should, oh, oh, you wait, you see us, but you don't see, oh. Um. I think, what Jessica, is, if you jump out of the uh, full screen view, then yeah, Paul's, shared, Paul's shared screen will sort of get smaller and you'll see. Other I'll, I'll, you'll stop see the for, I'll stop sharing for a second. Hopefully I won't do it wrong. You can do it so it just reduces the size and then we're back. Are you, know, you I back had the same, now? I had the same, I was, had the same well, issue. I'm back. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll just leave it off for a second. And, and then do you see the... Um, the youth voice of YV losing track of time purple. Yeah. Okay, click on that. And you should be good. Oh wow. And Charlene, are you in? Okay. I'm gonna share screen again. And you will have to kind of figure out how to go back and forth here a little bit. Um, I hope it will work. Uh losing track of Chris, would you mind reading uh first paragraph for us? Of this. Sure. Nice, nice and story. I would say this was the first college essay I came to in my Google Doc. So there's, you know, <laughs> I would say this is typical. It's not the best one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't pick the best one. That's uh, good. When, yeah. when something makes me lose track of time I, and I get lost in the moment, I recognize it is significant to me. The most prevalent example of this occurring in my life is when I'm acting or creating imaginary scenes from real life situations. I think about acting more than anything else on a daily basis and nearly every situation in which I find myself. The complexity of acting is fascinating because it allows for me to be part of an idea that is typically larger than life, out of this world, or simply an alternate reality. In my head, I imagine a camera ready to film everyday scenarios and I analyze how I would approach each scene through multiple different emotions or themes. I've always noticed my brain works more creatively in situations where people wouldn't typically give the issue at hand much thought, and I imagine myself pushing the envelope. Ultimately, character creation is what captivates me. It is the time with a script where I feel I am actually connecting with someone unique. 
I find acting enticing because I tend to overthink things in life and acting allows me to prepare for various scenarios that I've contemplated too much previously in real life situations. In daily interactions or conversations, I always think to myself how I could have expressed myself or presented myself differently and acting allows for me to fantasize a new outcome. All right. Uh, should we go to the second paragraph? Maybe we should hear the whole thing. Sorry, Chris. Okay. Well, let me share another example of what makes me lose track of time on something I really enjoy. Being part of the fashion and branding world while I build a, building a business around it on my own has been a major distraction in a good way. I've always found much pleasure in expressing myself in the way I dress, and I think of it as art. Putting an outfit together allows for a daily creative outlet, and during high school, I've been able to mix the worlds of clothing and business. Since my sophomore year, I've been buying and selling pieces of clothing through an online portal I created, and I've continued doing so to this day. It allows me to see the details of running a business, whether it be from communicating to customers around the world or being able to calculate profits from total revenue. I find it extremely rewarding going about my day while getting notifications that one of my items sold and my focus immediately turns to fulfilling the sale as everything else becomes secondary. I've been able to make this my job throughout high school. I hope to build a brand of my own and create clothing and other merchandise inspired by some of my favorite designers and creators. And I think this was based on a college, a common app that was like, you know, what's something where you've, you know, totally lost track of time. Other people, what uh, first first uh, first thoughts about this? What does it make you think about the whole process? And I th personally, I think it's a it really interesting first draft. Um, but yeah. other thoughts, yeah, yeah, it's I'm a asking, great, yeah. great first draft. It's um, a what? It's a great first draft. Hmm. Um. Yeah, just just quickly asking for everybody to jump in with a thought about this or what it makes you think. Yeah. As I was listening to Chris read this and going from paragraph one to paragraph two, I was thinking a conclusion was going to be sort of the relationship of that interior imagination and then the, ex, the exterior sort of action in the world and um, some reflection about that. Um, and as a first draft, it sets up, I mean, the fact that I've, I was able to sort of gather that and sort of be interested in it in that way may be enough, but it also seems to invite another level of, um, of thought about it. If there's more work, to, if, if this were to be, if there are multiple drafts of this coming, who knows? And that's that turn that we were talking about, that turn see, from the sure. inward out. So just to, um, We've started thinking about make cycles and AI might make cycles, Jessica. And it's the three things I was thinking about. I'm thinking like the first make cycle can be some something about getting that first draft and getting your topic. And maybe it, it is about thinking about audience too. I'm not sure. And then there's a the second draft and then a the third draft kind of thing. So that's what I'm we're kind of messing with. I want to rush in and say that. I would it would not necessarily be the best thing to do to turn this kid off to AI, right? But <laughs> let's see what happens when we do. Okay, fair enough. There may there may be lots and lots of other ways to help this writer. And why are but, you but, saying that, Paul? Um, because there are lots of ways to help the writer, you know. Um, but we've talked about how AI might fit. Is that fair? Did, did so, but, yeah. So you wouldn't turn this kid loose on AI right now? No, I, I just want to say there, it's it's. I think it can be one of the options, but it's not the only option. It's the only option we're going to demonstrate tonight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, other options could yeah. be that person talking to a trusted reader, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. or that's right, exactly. Um, Charlene, were you talking and you you were muted? Oh, thank you for noticing, Charlene. I was, um, but I was basically going to say something similar to David. Like, mm -hmm. to me, this almost comes across as two different essays, yeah. possibly two different writers, right? And I would love to see the connections between the first paragraph and the second paragraph. Or development of one or the other, right? I mean, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So here... 
we're going to jump into um, act, you doing something now. Um, if you can see my screen, there's a little edit underneath August 23rd, right? It's also on the black screen, the black t thing at the top. You want to go to edit post. Once you've done that, what opens up for you is AI Mojo. Um, after you click on in the upper right hand corner here, okay, you find AI Mojo. Now, Chris, you were suggesting, and I'm just I'm just going to keep going here <laughs> with this idea. But um, on the quick access, you might ask the kids, and you can you can go back and kind of figure out how to do this at another time. You might have them put say back and dear reader these 12, 13, 14, and 15 of revising on their quick access dashboard. That's a detail we don't need to go there right now. Go to templates, which is the second um, <laughs> tablet over, or, or yeah, right? Paul, could I, could I interrupt yeah. to just ask you, which AI um, site is this? So we are using um, OpenAI. Okay. Um, and um, the plugin is AI Mojo. Okay. The templates were created by me and other teachers this spring, right? And, um, oh, Jessica, come back. She will, I hope. All right. Once we get to select a template, we want to type in um, revising uh, 12 which is say back, or you can type in say back, it'll come back, it'll come up like that. You click on that and it comes up, it opens. If I'm going too fast or something, let me know. Okay, um, there are some options here. We're, we're just going to stay, oh, Jessica, hopefully she'll catch up when we get back. Um, there's a box, the text box, there's a little blue, um, little blue plus sign in the top right corner. What you want, let's select the whole thing. By doing that, you could, um, you can click just anywhere in the second paragraph. And then you can click the little blue plus sign and you can insert the third, insert everything from the top until the selected block. All right, if you're okay with that, let me know if you're not, let me know too. So all of the text from the left side is now here on the right side. Worth pointing out that this is how we're kind of thinking AI works. You have something you've created, now you're getting feedback about it, right? You're not like getting a, you're not asking it to write the essay for you, right? When you're ready, hit generate. And then let's see what we can come up with and All right, um, I can read mine. I uh, just want to say, just because it's worth noting, that in you want to. It says do it three times. You'll probably have to tell kids that. Come back to templates again. Make sure it's all here again. Let's generate it again and get a third, a second version. Okay. And then I'm going to ask everyone, if you've done that, to read what you came up with here. So I'm going to get a third one. So I have the revising 12 say back template. Um, and we'll take thoughts and questions. The whole text is here. And then I'm going to hit generate. And that, OK. So re again, this is like the first round in a peer review, right? What what kind of sort of reflection would you say back? Somebody want to read what you got back? Just one of them. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the third one I got re reads, it seems like you have found a way to use acting and fashion to express yourself creatively. 
And I'm curious to hear more about how that creative outlet has shaped your life. Mm -hmm. And my first wouldn't one was, oh, wouldn't, ahead, it be those, wouldn't it be those creative outlets? I mean, I'm curious. I mean, this is the thing. There are two paragraphs in this. And those AI creative said, outlets. It's, the, that it's seeing it that as creative. one outlet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. I, I, yeah. Could be, yeah. I mean, that would be a good thing for the kid to ask, right? <laughs> when, when we get it. Somebody else want to read what they got? Or do we need help for getting it? <laughs> well, I would just add to David's mind were plural in my, it said, it seems like the activities um, and it seems like, you know, it seemed like the aspects, it sounds like acting and fashion are both important and influential aspects of your life. And it seems like exploring these two worlds has allowed you to express yourself and hone your creative skills while also learning more about the business side of things. Did anybody else come up with one? Jessica, were you able to do it or? I was following yours on the Okay, screen. that's fine. Yep, yep. So I'll read one of mine then. I, um, you seem to have a great passion for both acting and fashion, and it's clear that you've been able to find success in both areas. It's interesting to see how you're able to take the same mindset of creative problem solving and apply it to each of these pursuits. So, um, Charlene, did you get to one or you following or remember to unmute? If yeah, you... I'm, uh, <clears throat> I'm still uh, not even logged in because it doesn't like my password and I asked for a oh, no. reset and it, oh. I haven't okay. gotten the email yet. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, um, Paul, your number one actually is, is more than just a say back, though. That last part, you know. It's interesting to see how you're able to take the same mindset and apply it in these pursuits. I don't know. It seems like it's almost trying to give it a little bit of advice, too. Maybe. Uh huh. Like it's commentary in, in addition to like saying it back. Right. Which is good. Okay. <laughs> Maybe. I don't. So the, the real question here, and we won't know till we test it, right? Is, is like, is this, well, let me ask your first thoughts about that do you think this these saybacks would be useful to a writer in what way any thoughts on that i absolutely think they would be for a couple of reasons one i think it was you chris who said um sometimes students don't know what they're writing like they think they're writing something that's not how you said it but it was Mm -hmm. they, they think they're writing something, but what they're actually writing is not that something. Mm -hmm. And so having the say back is a helpful way of having them see what is actually read and understood to be there. Um, I also think it's like the first thing in a good peer review or a good teacher conference that you would do is acknowledge what they have there and what they're doing. Cool. I, I'm going to rush ahead and show the next one. I'm going to go, um, I went back to templates and I'm going to go and find revising 13. Just pointing, right? You can do this too or, or watch. It's fine. Whatever you're doing. Um, I'm going to, again, I'm, I clicked in the last paragraph there so I can click this and choose to insert everything. So the whole essay is here again. By the way, I could decide to just get feedback on one paragraph, right? Or the second mm -hmm. paragraph. That's a, another possibility here. Um, and I'm going to generate. And for pointing, um, let me do it a, a couple of times. Let me just, yeah, I'm watching the clock here a little bit too, but so I'm back. I'm still using revising 13. I'm going to hit generate. So notice in my results, um, my revising ones, I mean, my say back ones are still here for me to look at as I'm doing this, right? And now here's my um, 
my say back. I'm sorry, my my pointing. Um, not sure which I let me look. Two one. Yeah, okay, let's choose the second one. So the words and phrases that really got through to me were, I find the acting enticing because I tend to overthink things in my life and acting allows me to prepare for the various scenarios that I've contemplated too much previously in real life situations. Um, maybe reading these again is not necessary. Here's the second quote here, right? Being part of the fashion and then it picked out this third quote. It allows me to see the details. And then it says, these words and phrases resonated with me because they represent something I can relate to, the desire to take control of my life and create something meaningful from them. My acting and my business ventures are both in interesting. It's, it's, it's acting like it is. Right. Right. Okay. But my acting and my business ventures are both expressions of the same idea that I have a power to make my dreams come true. I find a lot of energy in the thought that I can use my imagination, and my skills to create something that is truly my own. These words and phrases carry special conviction because they give me the confidence to pursue my passions. Did yeah, I, was anybody else? Surprised, I was surprised by the, the person of the writing here. Mm hmm. Oh yeah, that <laughs> yeah. I, I the first the one that uh, got me it says this is the phrase that really penetrates my skull, and I just kind of paused for a second. I was like, it's like, wait a minute. I'm reading a lot of stuff about uh, how we talk about the AI and how to name it, as opposed mm -hmm. to sort of completely anthropomorphizing like this. But the phrase, I'll finish it. The phrase that really penetrates my skull and carries special conviction is quote. I find it extremely rewarding going about my day while getting notifications that one of my items sold and my focus immediately turns to fulfilling the sale as everything else becomes secondary, end quote. This phrase resonates with me because it is a perfect example of how passion can take over and transform a person's day-to-day -day routine. It captures, captures the energy and enthusiasm I have for pursuing what I am passionate about and the feeling of accomplishment when I am able to make progress towards my goals. It's a reminder that I can always go after what I want and that the rewards are already worth it inside the server farm and the multiple algorithms on the silicon chip. I mean, it's wild. I mean, the, the, the biography of the critic. Yeah. Anyway, that's my side comment. No, no, it's not a side comment. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I actually found that one, uh, that pa last paragraph there, very helpful in the sense that it it sort of points them to the unifying idea of how they can try to connect those two things which the writer probably didn't see the first time through um more so than um than the first exercise you did with the say back which i thought mm -hmm. was much um less helpful mm -hmm. just, just pointing back and i have it on the screen but just pointing back to what the template asks the AI to do, um, and it did, right. So I'll just read the first paragraph. Use the given text and simply point to the words and phrases which might most successfully penetrate a reader's skull, right? So, <laughs> well, that answers the question yeah. about how it got into his skull. <laughs> yeah. So you could, you could, um, and you can actually, uh, in, in AI Mojo, go in and revise this and change it around and 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 make up a, a different right template, but this is the one that you know just to, to, we're we're suggesting to start with. So not, you've made yeah. up these templates yourself? Yes, I wanted. To, yes, but I didn't. But again, and it's why I pointed out. Let me see. And if you go back to this page, I I just used the language and the ideas in this that Erica Kaufman did from the Bard College Writing and Thinking Institute, right? Um, so, yes. Well, I guess I guess my point was the the tasks speak to me as the writer of this text. Kind of that view, that vantage point, kind of surprised me. Uh huh. I thought the pointing was going to be like a peer reviewer pointing to things that um, stood out to I, them, rather than yeah, a representation of the I, writer. I actually, I actually think that part of the prompt is needs to be corrected. 
Yeah. Sure. I mean, it, it sounds like there needs to be a real backstory to the critic, to the AI critic. The, the first response I got to this question, and I was doing the pointing, the last paragraph that the AI provides, the AI says, quote, as an aspiring actor and entrepreneur, I am constantly reminded of the importance of staying yeah. motivated. So it, it's completely just matching aspects of the, the, the voice of the writer and modeling those into right so i voice. think speak to me as the writer of the text is a confusing prompt yeah oh, i see oh got it so that's yeah that that's that, that's helpful right. to understand sure yeah so i so we would revise that to say something like um you know we've actually said use use uh you and you use second person when you talk right so it then talks back to the writer better but well, this would be a case. Could it be something learn. like yeah. speak to me like a college admissions reader? Yep. Absolutely. We could play with that in there. Can I rush ahead to the other yeah. two just to get a sense? Okay. So templates, revising 14. Working. I'm putting the text, the whole text back in the text box. I'm hitting generate. Um, all along as we're doing this, that that we're constantly asking the writer, what do you find helpful, right, in this process? Which of these, like, do you find say back helpful, and and why, right? But um, I'm just going to grab the first one here. So this one says, how have you found expressing yourself through fashion? Through fashion has been how have you found expressing yourself through fashion has been a creative outlet. What has been some of the challenges you face when running a business? What are some of the details you notice when communicating with customers from around the world? What kind of brands are you hoping to build on your own? What motivates you to continue to pursue your passion? I am going to hit it one more time because I think that that's it's it's kind of really important to see that every time you do it, you're going to get something different, right? Um, I won't read through them, but uh, yeah, some different, some kind of the same, right? So quick thoughts on that. Does lurking help the writer? I just have a question about the, the term lurking. Yeah. Like lurking is someone who doesn't really uh, interact, whereas really you're like a critical questioner or something like that. You're a questioner. It's actually looking, for, it's lur what question, yeah, it could be explained. Peter Elba's language, <laughs> not mine. Uh, okay. I'll blame him for it. It's like, what are the lurk? What are the questions that are lurking? In oh, okay, text? got yeah. it. But that—that's a good point, though. I mean, lurking has a different meaning since Peter Elba wrote that. I'd say. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So we, we could just say, like, we could say questions behind the text or something, right? Um. And let me just play with this dear reader one because it, it's something worth doing here, I think. So what, what happens is the writer now is asked, right, to write a letter, is it, right? Um, and it says, um, in this case, I'm going to say, I think I might have two different topics here. Can you help me with knowing? Okay, fair enough. I mean, obviously, sure. the, those letters could be more detailed and more thoughtful, and and you know, you can, the better you make them, the the stronger your response you'll get. I'm popping all the text back in. Now there are, there are, there's the prompt going to AI, there's the text going to AI, open AI, and there's my question going there. Let's see what it generates. As it's generating thoughts, questions, issues. <laughs> I did it fast. I, I guess I'm, I'm really wondering what Jessica's thinking with all her background of this kind of writing. Are you talking unmuted or no? 
even here. Oh yeah, Jessica, you're muted. Okay. Oh, Jessica, we, we can't hear microphone you. microphone at the bottom. As she's doing that. <laughs> I'll, I'll read through here. Uh, or, uh, if I can, I'll just pick up on the line that hits it for me is uh, okay. in the middle here. It, it might be helpful for you to consider ways to combine these two topics in order to make a clearer and more cohesive argument. Is it that came up with yours or my, it's in here? No, I'm reading off of your screen here. Oh, you are good. Good. In oh, there. Yeah. yeah. In that paragraph. There it is right there. I think your cursor isn't close to it. But and then it gives an for example, you could focus on how the creative outlets, yeah, right? Additionally, I, I mean that that feels to me like something I would say in a conference to the kid, mm -hmm. like you know, how are we going to work this through? Are you going to put these together? Are you going to focus on one on the other? Right. Um, that gives some idea there. But also, there's encouragement. You know, it's mm -hmm. good luck. <laughs> it's so nice. Right. Um, so pointing out again, um, what AI Mojo allows for, and, and when the kid turns the monitor off or the, the browser off, all this goes away. So if they want to keep any of this anyway, they'd have to copy and paste it somewhere. But right now you get to go back and say, oh, let me see my say back again. Let me see my pointing. Let me think about what questions there are. And then it's response to my dear reader letter. Um, in theory, you then could go over here on the left side and just sort of do some revision work, save it, and, and kind of move on. And addressing the privacy issue, um, when you do save it, you can save it um, privately, right? Um, so it doesn't go anywhere but it is saved then. Um, but, oh, here. And Paul, you, you were saying at this point, the results of the AI Mojo feedback are not, if you want to save those, you need to do it manually on your own and put them in a document somewhere. They're not saved um, to a, a clipboard in your session or anything like that. So just a, just when you close feature. the browser, it goes away. You, mm -hmm. can, you can save anything. Where are they? Here are my in the results. notes, right? You can save things to the notes, but that also goes away. <laughs> so, but you could save a bunch of them together in the notes and then copy and paste them all together, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Right? Or you could yeah. select them. Yeah, yeah. So there is all that. Uh, just a question on this AI because yeah, yeah. I have no experience yet. Um, yeah, it, let's it, let's just talk now. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It is. Um, uh, does this allow, for example, can this be shared between the teacher and the student, that stuff that you were just doing there? Or is it just the student and then he would have to copy and paste it somewhere else? I mean, can, yes, is, is it like Google matter. Share? Like, can they be in the same thing and looking at the same stuff or? Um, they would have to copy and paste it. So yeah. what I've, the, the easiest thing to do is just copy and paste it right below your own text, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then the teacher can see it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so there are ways around it. Jessica, oh, oh wait, move over. Oh, she can't. Oh no, you're in the right place. Okay. Do you see where to unmute the the microphone at the bottom? And then. Okay, found it. Very um, good. Okay. <laughs> I'm like so struggling. I had so to what leave. You, what were you saying when you were muted? Go ahead. Oh, what are, what are your thoughts at this point? Yeah. You didn't want to hear me. Okay. Um, I think this is has so much potential to help students. Uh, and the the things that we were talking about earlier about um, vulnerability and creating safe space um, and. Um, finding topics. I think that's actually the hardest thing with this essay is finding topics that students um, kind of getting past their feelings of vulnerability and having them, the best topics are the ones that are actually vulnerable, not so vulnerable that they feel dangerous to share, but vulnerable enough to reveal who they really are. And so I love um, 
I love these prompts and I love how they say back and kind of give golden lines and then how it moves more deeply into suggesting and noticing. Um, I also think that it depends what you type in there, right? For the template. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be interesting to say, like, if your question is, these are two different stories, how do I connect them? Um, and see, like, just more clearly directing the AI to see what they do, what it does. Well, in the reader's letter, you could say that, right? And so yeah. I said, I said, what do you think? But you could say, I want both yeah. of these topics. Help me connect them, right? You could mm -hmm. ask for that. Yeah. yeah. And I think this would be incredible instead of a peer review, like to start working here with it and then build confidence and revise and then bring in maybe a human reader mm -hmm. or two that feels safe. Yeah, or but, to do it the other way. What do you think, Jessica, of you know, working with the human first and then popping it into AI and seeing if that gives you or, something? Yeah, or both things. I think that yeah. getting a topic is something that might need like more of the human. I know when I was doing the work and when I've taught it over and over again, that's where sort of sitting with students, having them brainstorm. And I know, Paul, you can probably do that in AI with your, so, um, but really so I, finding a topic that speaks to the student first um, is something that might be helpful with a human. The furthest tab on the right is um, ChatGPT itself, right? Which which allows dialogue. Um, on, on I so that that actually might be a place to develop a topic instead of with the templates, right? So learning how to use AI Mojo that way is an interesting process, I think, as well. But then I, I just want we would probably first make a suggestion to students, start with the human first and then go to AI and then or whatever, just to try different things out. But eventually it's those. I want to watch what kids decide to do, right? Mm -hmm. When do you want to use it? When do you want to use people? You know, it's it's one of your one of your levers when you want to start moving with it. But yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, but they need to be introduced to it first. <laughs> for the, because, because they think they think AI is the thing that's gonna write their essay for them. Right. And I hope this kind of disabuse them of that and kind of suggest, no, oh, it could do this other thing for me too, right? Uh, yeah. Well, have have any of you uh, just pulled off of AI samples, sample college essays to have students look at some of those first? Um, no, I haven't. I have not. I did, I mean, that's what I've done. I've collected a bunch of examples. Um, and I have those in my book um, mm -hmm. that I wrote, but I think it's really important. Um, and it's hard because they're not, there's these like really annoying books, like writing a co college admission essay for dummies, or there's some that are really good and have some examples. The problem is that if you're teaching not just the elite students, you're teaching all students this genre, a lot of times the samples are pretty, yeah obnoxious yeah or, i know exactly what you're talking about yeah, with my esl like population basically what i land and yeah so what, I think or what i've done samples that are really um speak to the experience of the students that you're teaching yeah my, my i i often start by pulling up my my own collection of previous year student yeah. samples yeah. um uh, but i'm just i'm that's what i'm just wondering if that's if something like that's available on AI, if you if you've come across well, that kind of stuff, well, we can make it available, right? We can build it. Yeah. Um, one of the things in your article, Jessica, is that you give a, a few different places, like here's here was the first draft and here's the second draft. Mm -hmm. um, AI could understand the difference between those two, and then give and, and then kind of compare oh. what they're looking at. So th there are more sophisticated oh. ways of using AI than we've presented here tonight just want to say and then there's all there's all the fine-tuning that David 
I want to turn to you to, to suggest, but just today, OpenAI said they're going to open up, there's an API, um, they're going to allow us to fine tune um, using our own documents. So, so there's 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 a there's a world out there around all that. Yes, and and so Jessica, do you still have the fifty that you collected? You, did you say 50? I can look? I don't know if I do, but I'll look. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I definitely have. I mean, you can use the essays that I have in the book. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah, that's a. We'll, we'll start there. And I can but, look. I could send anyone. I'll see if I have copies of the book. So there's it. all that idea. And I want to go back to the first idea or one of the early ideas here about creating personas of the of the people who are reading this stuff, I think is a fascinating avenue to take. I think we need to kind of build those first, maybe ourselves, and then have the students go in and and say, I like this part of it, but why don't we make him, you know, a, a soccer coach? <laughs> they can, they can, they can then play with what we build. But I think that would be interesting to do too. I could go on, but I'm not going to um, <laughs> because we need to stop. Um, thoughts? We'll return to this next week in some fashion. Um, any thoughts about where we need to? What you want to say here at the end? <laughs> Well, as a new person here, I just want to thank you for introducing some of this. And uh, I really have to go back and get started on my AI lessons. So that's where I'm headed next. <laughs> the one, I'll say one thing that this reminds me of, I keep thinking this every time in these conversations and it shows up in all the other things I look at. I, I immediately put on my teacher hat and remember what it was like to sort of work through a syllabus and think about pacing and the idea that you're giving time to kids and students to work together on some some schedule and then work with the tool and then on together. I mean, the whole business of having a humans involved in this conversation and in this interaction, this content generation feels really important as does um, creating prompts so that the the, the the persona of the AI is, is really clear to kids as they go through it. But it's fascinating as a as an architecture to sort to climb into for all these reasons that you guys are talking mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of the stuff that um, we experienced tonight demonstrates that just like any tool, it needs to be refined, right? Or, or tested out because sometimes it may not give the result that you're looking for. So then you have to go back and, and retool it to a certain extent. Um, but the possibilities are endless for things yeah. that could do. And it's, it's, it's interesting too, Charlene, like how even if we're having students do peer review or if I'm individually meeting with students, like teacher conferences, like I sometimes don't give the right feedback or feedback that isn't <laughs> helpful and I need to fine tune. You know what I mean? So yeah. I do think it's actually the part of learning to write figuring out, and I like what you said, Paul, like these are tools and figuring out which ones work for us and giving students that agency to decide, like, how is this helpful and to reflect on it? Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Come on back next week and we'll keep talking. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night.